Hi Andrew again. Now I'm going to show you how to cut some of this uh, wood up. Uh, the first bit of wood I'm going to cut actually isn't from a pellet. Um, it's a piece of timber that I purchased from a uh, timber yard just up the road from me. Um, but the same sort of method. And I'm going to show you um, both just cutting what it's like to cut dry wood um, but also cutting uh, wet wood. Because sometimes you have pellets and they're wet and perhaps you, you know, the weather uh, is not permitting for them to dry quick enough. Um, might be during winter, um, you know, or you might have a lot of rain and been outside, so you know, haven't had any time to, to dry. But anyway, we'll get on to the first one, um, which is yeah, just showing you how I use a handsaw to you know, cut the dry timber. Okay, uh, I'm, I was making a video before, and unfortunately, the battery went flat on the uh, video camera. But um, I have a spare battery, so I just put another one in. So I might just start that again. Um, basically, here I have a, a knife. Um, usually, I use this for carving, um, but I've broken the tip off. I could repair it, but it's a lot of work. So, anyway, it's good enough for this. Uh, I have a square. It's good to have a square um, that has a bit of uh, a thickness to, to it as a side to the, um, uh, the main rule. And the reason being is then you can put up a piece of a timber. Uh, it can you know, butt into the side of it. Um, I have another square, uh, which I don't know where I put it actually. Uh, anyway, that's just a flat one, and you know you can, it's it's very hard to you know, rule across like um, you know, like that, for instance. See, yeah, I can slide that against the timber. Uh, with the other one, I can't do that. So having one that's got a bit of thickness to one end is good. Um, all right. So this crane going to my wait for a second. So I'm going to measure on my timber here. Now I'm not using pellet wood obviously at the moment. This is a piece of timber I've had lying around in the, in the garage for a little while. And I'm just going to mark, uh, oh, I think 270 mil should be all right. It's a bit of a test on the thing I'm making. And then what I can do is, yeah, I can uh, mark a line where I want that. Okay. Now pencil behind the ear. Always have a pencil behind here. <coughs> try, try and get these cords out of the way, I guess. Uh, even notice, let's be honest. Right. So, with my knife, I'm going to score the timber. So, you can see that. And do it gently at first. Don't put too much pressure. Just enough. So, I've moved that now. Uh, too much pressure. So, a little bit at a time. Because we're doing multiple passes. It's a bit easier if I had a tip on this knife, but now I've just lowered the angle of it a bit so I can make the incision into the timber fibres. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm cutting this timber by hand and I want the edge to be relatively uh, straight. Uh, well, straight as possible really. So I'll make a few passes there, that's, that's probably enough. And I don't know if you can see there's a bit of, a, bit of an incision in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trace that around to the edges. So what I'll do is put my blade tip in there, and then I can you know, put the uh, put the rule up to it. I've done that. See, so that's now touching the, the tip. Might be easy if I show the other side actually. Um, so I got the blade in the edge, there, and I'll just hold the rule there. Okay, now again gently. I could change the angle of this. Careful, you're gonna cut yourself. You know, don't don't put too much pressure because um, the timber will, like this, will quite easily roll. And if it does, you could, you know, the knife might just go off and cut you. And um, I know, in early days, <laughs> when I started wood carving, I used to, well, yeah, I used to find that out quite a lot when the chisel was slip and my hand was in the way. So, you know, generally speaking, you're using a chisel and you're pushing that direction. Make sure your bloody hands are behind it because. Um, that thing goes. You'll know about it. Alright, so I've got some incisions there, so it looks okay. Yeah, it's alright. It could be a little bit better. As I said, if I had a better knife at the moment, I'm actually waiting for a knife uh, at the moment from America. I've had handmade, so I'm looking forward to that. It's been a while, but that's the post for you. So, now I'm going to put the blade back into the... Um, I'm going to have to probably move this around this way this time. Um, okay, so, 
is the angle. I'm going to slide that rule, or should I say um, square, up to there. And then I'll just make some little incisions this way. I'd normally move things around a bit, uh, make it easy for myself, but I, I need to try to make sure you can see it on the camera too. Uh, so I've had a few incisions in there, maybe I can just you know, turn that around. Slide it down. There's the incision. Hold that down. Make a few little harder cuts once you put down a bit of depth. All right, so now you can see that uh, the line. You can see the. The line there, you can see the pencil line, but then you can sort of hopefully see uh, the incision into the timber. You can see that darker line there, that's the incision. Alright, so what I want to do now is the length of timber I've got, you can kind of, kind of see at that. So I want another piece that's around that length. So I have one here, it's a little bit shorter, but that's okay. And what I'm going to do, uh, I'm trying to think the best way is for the camera. Um, you know, basically what I'm doing is I'm putting one piece of timber on top of the other. Okay, and then I'll clamp that. Let's grab my paper clamp. Oh, wow. One of my favorite clamps. Oh, there's another one handy. Anyway, this one's, this one's alright. Um, and on my desk, on my bench, should I say, I'm going to tension down this timber so it's nice and tight. So this is quite a good because um, you move it roughly in the place this clamp and then you use the, um, the handle to turn it so you've got like a screw here which puts more pressure down so it's very solid now. These other clamps up there. Okay. Now I've got a, got a handsaw here see this one now um, you can see here that it's it's got this black piece you're, if you're looking for a handsaw this is sort of what you're looking for uh, for this type of cut because it's um, this is strengthens the saw uh, some saws are quite long I'm gonna, I'll get it in a second um, I'll show you later and they'll, they're very flexible like you can see there's a bit of there's still a bit of um, I'm trying to find this. there's a bit of flex in this still um, but this black part really strengthens it Alright, so I'm doing this back to the front, so hopefully I go alright with this, but I'm just trying to show the camera. Um, I'm right handed. Okay. So put the saw in there, and I'll just slowly drag. Just slowly, so I can make a decision. And I want to just come a little bit across this line as much as possible. So make sure the teeth in that line that we've made, that incision. So I've got that there. Just a little bit slowly to begin with. Uh, try to hopefully can see. Okay, so I can stand here. Uh, so slowly, and you want to try and make the saw. If I'm standing on it, the work direction I'm looking, I'm looking directly straight on with this, so I can sort of using my eye, so sort of make sure that the blade is sort of straight. But what we're trying to do is keep our eye on where the teeth are and it makes sure that they're falling into that groove we've made. Okay, because once we've got that, things will be a lot easier. Alright, so now we're in there, I can just saw. So try and keep your blade as straight as possible, and theoretically, because we've made those incisions, um, the timber should be relatively straight for a um, you know, hand saw cut without using a miter box. So. I do is probably sharpen my uh, saw, I've been doing a bit of hand uh, sawing lately. Sometimes I get a bit of friction.
see that okay it's um looks relatively square actually I think it's towards the bottom here this timber's bent up a little bit but um I'm gonna try and see that angle that with the camera but apart from this little bit here which I'll know what's going on there go look at that end. it's you know it's not 100 percent perfect um but for a handsaw cut that's not too bad um, I'm not using a miter box uh, so I've got a piece there. Now I'll find a piece of, um, which I might have around here somewhere. Uh, I'll do, oh, here we go. This is a scrap piece of pallet wood. And it's absolutely saturated. It's so wet I can, I can feel how damp it is. Now, cutting wet wood can be challenging sometimes because you get a lot of, seem to get a lot of friction with the water, I think, against the blade. Now, it's not too bad on a small piece this thin and, you know, cutting cross grain like that. It's not, it's not so bad. It's um, doable. Now, the thing is, if you're cutting down this way um, with the grain, that's where it gets really tricky. And I, I'll grab my bigger blade and I'll show you what I'll do there. Now, Move this camera a little bit so you can see over here. All right, I've got a, a bench vise here. And these cords are in the way again. A lot of cords in my, in my workshop. Okay. And I'm just going to clamp that into there. Now, generally speaking, let's see if I can bring this camera around a bit. speaking, um, I would, if I really wanted to be accurate, I would do the same thing, I'd do an incision with the knife down this edge, across the top here, and back down the other end. Now when I'm making things with pellet wood, I'm not, I'm actually pretty sloppy, I, I, and I do that deliberately, uh, I have a bit of philosophy on that, but uh, I'll come back to that. Uh, I'll show you what I do though with wet wood to cut it. So, Grab the saw as well. Okay, now when I was talking about saw blades earlier, uh, this is the one I was talking about, see how flexi flexible that is, right? Okay. Um, now, if I was you know, cutting, I'm just going to cut, I'm not going to bother measuring anything. I'm just grab it. You can see that it's Cutting all right at the moment. Okay. And, and it's starting to fill the pool now. And it gets just much, much worse as the more blade goes in. Okay. I find this particularly doesn't really happen on wet wood as much. I mean, it does happen a little bit on dry wood, but on wet wood it's uh, horrible. So, and I've forgotten the other thing here. What I have here is, you can see this, is the uh, tub of grease. Okay, so just dip a little rag into there, and then I can just um, you know, wipe the grease just gently, just you know, sparingly, I guess, over the blade, and do it on both sides. So now, remember how much friction was getting there. The grease can see. Much better cutting. But the thing is, the grease does wear off relatively quickly. So you need to keep applying it. Like I can feel it's already starting to, it's almost all gone because it obviously it's wiping across the timber uh, or the wood as it's going. But that's the, uh, that's basically how I go about cutting. Uh, both cross grain and with the grain. So I've shown you there uh, a dry piece of timber, normal dry um, you know, from a timber yard and then a bit of scrap stuff here. 
So, um, until next video, hopefully, uh, you know, you get something out of this and find, found it very helpful.